Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. You know, if you asked most Americans what the leading cause of death in the United States is, you'd likely hear cancer or or maybe even COVID-19. In fact, the CDC attributed the increase in deaths from 2019 to 2020 to, of course, COVID-19. But even with that increase, the CDC also stated that cardiovascular disease continues to be the leading cause of death for people in the United States. Well, joining us here on Health Professional Radio is Dr. R. Preston Mason. He's joining us here as a faculty member at Harvard Medical School Department of Medicine, Division of Cardiology, to discuss the very latest research and clinical news updates on the benefits of omega-3 fatty acids in cardiovascular disease. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Preston Mason, and thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you very much, Neil. Look forward to our discussion today. Now, I did, of course, mention that you're a faculty member there at Harvard Medical School. Uh, Give us a brief look into your professional background, your area of expertise, and um, then tell us what omega-3 fatty acids are and where they come from. Sure. Yes. Uh, I've been at Brigham and Women's Hospital, which is affiliated with Harvard Medical School, for the last 20 years. Before that, I was had a university appointment in Pennsylvania and at the University of Connecticut before that. My interest is cardiovascular research, so I've spent uh, some 30 years directing research labs that are specifically looking at mechanisms of heart disease and have published extensively in this area. When it comes to omega-3 fatty acids, uh, they are considered what we call essential fatty acids. In other words, our body does not make them ourselves, but we absolutely need them for normal cell function and particularly protection of the heart. So we will get these omega-3 fatty acids from our diet, particularly oily fish, marine-derived oily fish that contain or and are very rich in these, such as sardines mm-hmm. and tuna and salmon. Is that the only source of these omega-3 fatty acids? Are there any other alternative sources? When we think about alternatives, we'll often turn to fish oil dietary supplements, mm-hmm. But unfortunately, they're very uh, poorly regulated, so you can get um, very inconsistent benefits and results. We actually did specific investigations into dietary omega-3 fatty acids and found that in addition to the favorable omega-3 fatty acids, they also had saturated fat and oxidized oils that may actually uh, take away any benefit from these products. So the best source remains to be fresh fish, particularly oily fish. Uh, For example, Tilapia, very popular, and yet it has very little levels of omega-3 fatty acids. So you have to be selective in the source of these fish. How do these omega-3 fatty acids help with cardiovascular disease or people who are at risk but haven't yet developed it? So we have for many years done large outcome trials looking at patients who with cardiovascular disease are treated with omega-3 fatty acids. And despite the strong correlations between a diet rich in omega-3 fatty acids and reduced cardiovascular risk, these outcome trials using specifically formulated omega-3 fatty acids have generally been uh, negative. They have not shown any benefit. Until recently, uh, a new formulation was developed which looked at only one particular omega-3 fatty acid called EPA or eicosapentaenoic acid. And These trials have now shown very favorable effects in patients with cardiovascular disease or who have diabetes and high risk. So we're learning that not all omega-3 fatty acids are the same Mm -hmm. and that a specific formulation, particularly prescription formulation, may be needed. What about people who are taking statins for their heart conditions? Are they going to benefit from omega-3s? And can these omega-3 fatty acids eliminate the need for statins? Well, we all... If you have cardiovascular disease, you will definitely be treated with statins. So any trial looking at a further benefit has to treat patients who are already on this, what we call standard of care or statins. And in the case of these trials with a particular omega-3 fatty acid called EPA, they show benefit on top of statins for patients with cardiovascular disease. In fact, a further 25% reduction in cardiovascular events. Should these be prescribed or can they be obtained over the counter or are they different when one or the other is used? That's a good question. Uh, Again, we have looked specifically into this question by evaluating the quality and content of dietary fish oil supplements compared to prescription products and found that uh, the dietary products are not uh, very well controlled with respect to their content and their quality. 
So you really need to go to a physician and look for a prescription form if you have cardiovascular disease and you meet the criteria for that particular product. So please, if you have cardiovascular disease and you uh, would be eligible for treatment, you really need to talk to your physician about it. Throughout this ongoing pandemic, we've heard many different things about common everyday compounds and solutions being used to treat or prevent COVID-19. Is there any indication at all that omega-3s could prevent COVID-19 or possibly be used in some type of a treatment for COVID-19? Yes, that is being investigated. We don't have any results yet, so Mm -hmm. certainly no suggestion that we should do that, but it is being investigated because many of the patients uh, who are most vulnerable to the more serious consequences of COVID-19 are indeed patients with cardiovascular risk or cardiovascular disease. So it kind of makes sense that if you're at risk for cardiovascular disease, you're probably going to be at much higher risk for COVID as well, at least the serious consequences. And so this is a reasonable area to be investigating. Do you think that someone who is on a a regular regimen of omega-3 fatty acids, would their cardiovascular system and any other systems overall be a little bit more uh, fortified against viruses such as COVID or the flu? Well, I think anything that reduces your risk for cardiovascular disease is certainly going to be beneficial. And that is a full array of, of therapies available, whether it's controlling your cholesterol levels or getting your glucose back into control, all of these things that we need to do to protect our heart and and to lower our risk is going to be beneficial in the case of any infectious agent, uh, and including COVID-19. Talk a little bit about early diagnosis and a little bit about disease management, some of the changes that you've seen during this pandemic. So it, clearly we have even greater urgency to manage our cardiovascular disease risk. This pandemic has only exacerbated that issue. Uh, Patients, you know, that were already compromised with respect to their immune system, with respect to pulmonary health or cardiovascular health, uh, suffered disproportionately from this pandemic. Mm -hmm. So indeed, you need to talk to your physician if you think you are having uh, any problems with uh, your heart. Uh, A sad part of this pandemic is many people are putting off reasons sometimes beyond their control, uh, reasons uh, to not see their physician. Mm -hmm. So that has put them at even greater risk for more serious complications. So like any disease, the sooner you can intervene, the sooner you can get your blood pressure under control, get those lipids under control, and attend to those other risk factors, stop the smoking, uh, get the diet back under control, all these things we need to do to minimize our risk for cardiovascular disease and further complications. Do you have a a website uh, in mind that uh, our listeners might go to to learn more about omega-3 fatty acids? Absolutely. Well, the American Heart Association is also a good website for cardiovascular health in in general. And um, I think you really need to go there as well for advice about omega-3 fatty acids or any treatment since there's a lot of confusing messages out there today. Dr. Mason, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. R. Preston Mason. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health professional radio.